everyone reserves special gratitude for a parent, a friend, a place or an incident that has molded them and changed them. This kind of gratitude motivates goodness and love. And I reserve such gratitude for the FMA sisters whose role in my life has been a blessing. I would like to share with you my time as a young boy and a young man when my days were jubilant because of the kindness that I received from the people whom I loved dearly. When days were worrisome and difficult, the FMA sister were quick with their help for our family. I remember my parents' laughter and joy when the FMA sisters would visit. We shared a one-of-a-kind relationship with the sisters, spending our time sharing the love of God, sharing prayer, and many times sharing food too. Two of my sisters were in the embrace of the FMA sisters when they studied at Little Flower, Dibrugar, Assam. Stories of their time with the sisters still find a place in our conversation till today. As a family, we strongly believe that FMA sisters across the region are united in their generosity. My elder sister would often narrate to us her experiences with the sisters and their magnanimous hearts. While in Kohima and Guwahati, my sister was taken care of by the FMA sisters who ensured that every one of her needs was supplied. They were her mentors, her companions, her counselors, and her friends. My sister would always express how the FMA sisters were vital to her development as an individual. The FMA sisters taught her the many virtues that she holds on till today. The gifts of obedience, discipline, punctuality, respect, kindness, sincerity, piety, and trust in God. I see that these novel qualities distinguish the products of FMA convents and schools everywhere. Young girls and boys grow up to inspire and become facilitators of change because of what the sisters have furnished them with. Like my sisters and the rest of my family, I too am very close to the FMA sisters. The love for me is immense and their prayers sustain me till today. Along the way, I have fostered lifelong friendship with many of the sisters. However, there is one sister in particular whose kindliness has imprinted in me an indelible mark. We go back a long way, Sister Angela Daclio and I. The day I met Sister Angela is vividly etched in my memory. I was engrossed in a game of football with the other seminarians. And for a young boy of about 13, I could not care more for anything than the game. Sister Angela waved at me from a distance until she caught my attention. Rather displeased by their interruption, I walked up to Sister and spoke to her. Sister was already familiar with me. She asked if I was Celine's brother, to which I gladly replied that I was. Her familiarity with our family especially my sisters, created an instant bond that would go on to be a blessing for me in uncountable ways. The generosity of Sister Angela Daclio soon began to nurture me. Since our encounter was at the seminary, St. Joseph Seminary, Dibrugar, Assam, Sister Angela brought me to a meeting with the administrator of the seminary. With her sanguine demeanor and calmness that I admired, she told the administrator that she would take care of all my needs at the seminary. This meant she was going to be a benefactor of my tuition fee, my hostel fee, purchase of textbooks, copy books, and study materials, apparels, and so on. I was indeed blessed, and even in my juvenile capacities, I understood that I needed to be grateful to her. And so I was. Sister Angela provided for all my needs and took care of everything till I reached the novitiate at Sunnyside. Many would not believe that Sister Angela and became good friends. She connected with young people in heart, warming ways. She wrote letters to me every month for as long as she could. These letters that I hold so dear 
are evidence of true friendship in the love of the Lord. Sister Angela would encourage me to be close to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, to pray frequent visit to the chapel, to be kind, to be charitable and to always pray. She also wrote to me about the happenings in her life, stories that she was sure would inspire me and change me. As the years passed, Sister Angela continued to look after me physically and spiritually. Her support brought me till my philosophy studies at Sonada Darjali. I had promised Sister Angela that I would visit her after my examin be it examination, for time was little and any visit before that seemed near impossible. It was in December 1995 that I would finish my beard studies, but to my greatest despair, Sister Angela passed away before I could visit her. It was a time of deep sorrow for me. I could not convince myself that Sister Angela was no more. Memories of Sister Angela are all I have now. She was kind, not only to me, but also to my family. And as the saying goes, kindness begets kindness. Sister Angela's life was enriched by the kindness she gave returning to her. She lived a long and good life. Sister was known for the sacrifices she made for others. Without a second thought, she would give away food from her plate, even if that meant keeping a meal. One would never leave with an empty stomach after a visit to Sister Angela, my family tells often. Even if Sister Angela is no longer with me, my experience with the FMA sister has not expanded. As a young man, I worked with the FMA sisters at Don Bosco School, Boko, Cameroon, trying to assist and working along with them in every way I could. A greater involvement with the sister, however, was at Don Bosco School Agartala, where I learned the qualities that are most important for my role as a leader today. It is revealed to me as I write this, that at every stage of my life, the FMA sisters ensured that I was provided with what I needed. I was never overwhelmed with more than I could handle. And when they saw me fit, the sister would introduce me to larger responsibilities. With movement and transfers, visits to FMA communities undoubtedly became less frequent. But when connections are strong, ties seldom break. The FMA sisters at Kapmara, Maulandep, and Nongthamai were in the proximity of my postings. And the thought of the sister being near was always a source of encouragement for me. Now at present, I'm at St. Anthony's College, Shiloh serving the college as principal. I see the student sisters of the FMA joining as pupils every academic year. And I always, I'm always in awe of their spirit. The FMA sisters are not only enthusiastic about their studies, they also are, partic are also participative and never reluctant to put themselves in the midst of song and dance. They are responsible eager to help and often surrounded by friends from diverse communities, sharing their light and love. When I see the sisters at St. Anthony's College, I'm reminded of my days with the FMA sisters. And I think to myself, how blessed am I to be cut off the same fabric as them? I wish the congregation, all the FMA sisters, a very happy centenary year as they celebrate this year as their centenary time. God bless, long live to the FMA sisters. Hey!